Yeah, so you see that's the <clears throat> our smallest concert system, the XLE, and actually in this space, I mean, there's nobody really up at the end, but I can tell you this space is very easy to cover and we have even more throw to the back. So even our smaller system is very capable of playing, filling larger rooms. And uh, I tell you from, I was just looking at the amplifiers. They were just running idle. It was not even, we're not even using them. <laughs> uh, 지금 이큰 홀에 이 위에서 나오는 가장 작은 사이즈의 라인 어레이로 저 위에 별로 사람이 많지는 않지만 완벽하게 커버리지를 형성하고 있습니다. 어 그리고 뒤에 앰프를 뭐 트는 동안 확인을 했는데 레벨 지금 뭐 레벨 매트로 하나가 뜰거 뜰까 말까 하는 정도의 출력밖에 내지를 않았다고 합니다. 얼마나 크게 낼수 있는지까지도 알 수가 있었습니다. Okay, so we might listen to it a little bit later, but <coughs> I got some more exciting news for you. 나중에 다시 다시 한번 들을 기회가 있겠지만 또 다른 재밌는 것을 소개해 드리도록 하겠습니다. There is more happening in the Xline Very Compact family and one of the latest and greatest editions, and <clears throat> it's so new that I only could steal one prototype out of engineering. Production is just around the corner, I couldn't get anything. The XCS 312, it's a cardioid subwoofer with three 12 inch drivers. Now you might look at it and say, I see only two. That's right, because the third driver is in the back. 어, XL VC 시리즈에 또 하나의 신제품이 탄생을 하고 있습니다. 어, XCS 311이라고 하는 스피커인데요. 지향성 우퍼입니다. 이것은 세 개의 어, 12인치 우퍼가 달려 있고요. 두 개밖에 보이지 않는 것은 하나는 뒤에 달려 있기 때문입니다. 지금 여기 와 있는 것은 프로토타입, 즉 아직 생산이 된 제품이 아니고요. 어, 엔지니어링 프로토타입이라 그래서 공장에서 실험을 하던 제품입니다. So, what is a cardioid sub? Cardioid subwoofer actually uses a yeah. very simple principle in acoustics, which, by the way, is <coughs> true for all of these things. Instead of one element that plays, and subwoofers usually have the <coughs> not-so-nice habit that frequencies below 100 hertz, and this is where subwoofers play, radiators tend to be omni. So typical subwoofer like on the Phoenix or the Yixub, the level that you have behind the sub or before the sub is not so much difference. So behind the speaker you have nearly the same level than in the front. With the cardioid sub you're using a second element to create actually an array of speaker. And while there is a distance involved, you also have to apply a certain delay. And what you do with these two elements is that you use the second one to steer the pattern. And rather than having the nearly omni pattern, what you do with the second one, you adjust it in a way to get much little, way less in the back and tighten the pattern to the front. So you're not really contributing with a third woofer to the output in the front, but what you do is you avoid the acoustic spill in the back. So you're more steering the sound towards where you want it, the audience, and get it off from the stage area where it might just create huge problems. XS311 라고 하는 지향성 우퍼 라고 하는 것은요, 여기 보시면 앞에 두 개의 유니트가 있고 뒤에 하나 있습니다. 이 뒤에 하나의 유니트는 앞에서 나오는 보통 이제 우퍼의 그런 지향성이 거의 없이 360도 거의 똑같이 음압이 나오는데 보통 X 서브나 여기 있는 피닉스 우퍼들 같은 경우도 앞에 있건 뒤에 있건 거의 비슷한 음압이 나오게 됩니다. 그러나 이 지향성 우퍼는 뒤에다가 우퍼를 하나 장착함으로써 개별적인 DSP 값을 주고 딜레이 값을 적용해서 이 거리만큼 딜레이 값을 적용해서 플레이를 하게 됩니다. 그러면은 그 재생된 값이 앞에서 나오는 
그 파형을 감쇄를 시키고 캔슬링을 시켜갖고 뒤에서는 굉장히 저음이 감소가 되는 것이죠. 그래서 만약에 이런 이런 스피커를 설치할 경우에는 무대에는 저음이 현저하게 감소하게 되는 것이고 뭐 이렇게 웅웅거리거나 이제 그런 효과들이 현저하게 없어지는 것을 느낄 수 있을 겁니다. So how does this look on the XCS 312? What you see here is a measurement 3 meters on axis front and rear of the speaker. And what you see is the blue curve, that's the SPL for the speaker. The red curve, that's the SPL behind the speaker. And if you look at the scale on the left side, you see that the rejection in the rear is about 15 dB. So that means that whatever you do to the front, it's 15 dB less in the back. A normal subwoofer, any of these here, this rejection, the rear would be about 2, maybe 3 dB less than the front. Cardioid sub, like the XCS 312, achieves 15, and that's a lot. The graph is the color of the speaker's face. The color of the speaker's face is the color of the speaker's face. The color of the speaker's face is the color of the speaker's face. The color of the speaker's face is the color of the speaker's face. If you look at the X-Sub or Phoenix Super, 많으면 3dB 정도 앞뒤가 차이가 난다고 합니다. 그러나 여기서는 15dB입니다. 엄청난 수치인 것이죠. Now, to achieve that, I mentioned there is, of course, some delay involved, and you also see some output, all pass filters here in the output. So pure things for face correction. So the controlling of a system like that is not that easy. However, once you have the parameters set, there's nothing you have to do. Just saying it's not trivial doing that. 보시는 화면은 XCS 312의 DSP 어, 블록을 보고 계시는데요. 물론 이 뒤에 후면에 있는 DSP 값에는 올패스 필터 같은 어떤 페이즈의 변화라든가 딜레이와 같은 그런 값들이 적용돼 있어서 그것들을 감쇄를 시켜주고 있습니다. And what does it really do? Let's listen to it now. 그럼 들어보도록 하겠습니다. We have set up, and as I said, I was only to able to steal one, unfortunately. <웃음> 하나밖에 훔쳐올 수가 없었다고 합니다. So we have a very small setup here. One XCS 312 and three XLD 281s on top of it, just to give some spectral balance. Now, what we do is we'll play some music, and while we play some music, I will start and mute and unmute the rear woofer. So, what happens if I mute the rear woofer? When I mute the rear woofer, the XCS 312 just is a normal subwoofer. Double 12, front loaded subwoofer with a typical nearly omnidirectional pattern. When this rear woofer is working, it creates that pattern control. And if you are in front of the woofer, actually, you don't hear a lot of difference, but if you are behind the woofer, all of a sudden, 